Hello everyone, this is Aaron from Let's Code Python and today I'm going to be showing you how you can scrape the web with Python and Beautiful Soup. So if you watched my last video, I showed you how you can extract data from an API using the requests library, but what do you do if your favorite website doesn't have an API? Well, that's where web, web scraping and Beautiful Soup can help you. Beautiful Soup is a fantastic library for extracting data from HTML and XML files. There are two basic steps to web scraping. First step is to get the page that you want into a string, so getting the HTML into a string, and then parse in that string to find the data that you want. So let's start by taking a look at the structure of an HTML page and kind of getting the basics down. So I have here an example file of what a HTML file might look like. It will start with a type declaration um, specifying that it's a HTML file, and then it will be followed by these HTML tags here. The HTML tags contain all the content that make up the website. So you'll find between the HTML tags, usually a couple of head tags. These head tags will contain all the meta information for the website and then a couple of body tags. And it's the body tags that contain all of the visible content for a website. So all of the text, all of the images, all of the links are held between the body tags. So a website will be made up of things like header tags, so things like h1 all the way up to h6, which make up headers, uh, paragraphs, so p tags, make up the blocks of text that you see on a website, and links, which are defined by a tags. You can also get lots of other types of tags, such as table tags and list tags, and it's the combination of all of these tags that will make up the content of the average website that you'll see on the internet. So now that we've got the basics down, let's take a look at the website that we're going to build our scraper around. So I've got an article here called The 10 Greatest Movies of All Time, According to Actors, and that's on cinemablend.com. And it's one of those articles, you've probably seen similar ones yourself, where all of the rankings in this top 10 are held on different pages. So if you want to know what number one is, you'll have to scroll through each of the pages until you find the the answer that you care about essentially. So this is something that scraping can help you with because because we can get Python and Beautiful Soup to do this for us so we don't even need to click on the links. The first thing we're going to need to do is have a look at the HTML that makes up this page. So if you right click on the page and click the option page source, it'll bring up all of the HTML that makes up the page that we were just looking at. So we would search for 10.taxi driver. See, it brings up this, which we've only got a match of one of. And essentially, what we're looking at is this text here. So, 10.taxi driver is the, the name of the film and the ranking. And we can see that in the HTML here. So, I don't expect you to read all this or memorize it, but I have copied it into PyCharm to try and make it a bit clearer what we're looking at. So, again, if I search for taxi driver, Actually, it was 10 dot taxi driver. 10 dot taxi driver. There we go. We see the same thing that we just saw on the page source. So that's good. And what you'll notice is that the 10 dot taxi driver is held between a div element that has a class of list style. And this is useful because we can use this for our web scraper to uniquely identify this element. So if we would search for list style in the HTML, you'll see that this is the only element that comes up that has that class name. So that's good because we can use that to grab this information. The next thing we want to look at is the link that we need to click on to continue to the next page and get all the rankings for the rest of the article. So in order to find that, we'll do a similar thing that we did before. So we'll find continued next page. Here we go. So it's come up here. If I search, you'll see there's no others. So again, we're matching the only element on the page that has this. And we can tell that because it's held between an A tag, which is a link. And we can see that that A tag has a class of next story. Uh, similar to before, if we search for next story, we'll see that that's the only tag on the page that has a class that matches that. So we can use this to uniquely identify the link as well. And believe it or not, with those two bits of information, we can now build a web scraper that will go through the article and get all of the results for us. So why don't we make a start on doing that? So I have a test file here where I've set up a bit of um, code to get us started. So I've defined a function called scraper. 
and that will take an argument of URL, which in this case will be the URL of the article that we're looking at. So you'll want to copy this URL here and put that here in your web scraper. And then the function in the scraper will return the results, which is at the moment will be an empty list, but we'll use that empty list to store the results from that the web scraper gets from the article. So we can actually run this quickly and we'll see it turn, returns an empty list. So, oh yeah, no, it won't, not yet, because I need to import the requests and beautiful soup libraries. So I already have a virtual environment set up. If you haven't get, got one set up, I recommend you do. And install requests, we're just going to do the in, pip install requests. And then to install beautiful soup, we're just going to do pip install beautiful soup. And it's beautiful soup four. There you go. And that's it. So deactivate that and close that. So you'll see these are no longer underlined red. And now if I run this again, it works and returns an empty list. Good. So we're off to a good start. Right. The first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use the requests library to get the URL that has been passed into the scraper. So we set up a variable called page and we're going to use the requests library get method to get the URL. So it's going to go away, it's going to get the URL and it's going to return the HTTP response. And then we're going to feed that response into beautiful soup. So let's have another variable called soup. We're going to use beautiful soup for to create a beautiful soup object. And we're going to give it the requests response object and we're going to get the text from that. And we're also going to set HTML parser. This is just something that you need to give. It will do this anyway, I think, by default, but just to avoid getting a, a slightly annoying warning, you just need to tell it what kind of parser it needs to use. So the next part is we want to grab this section of the article. So we want to go away and find the ranking and the name of the article. So we looked at this already. So if I search for 10.taxi space, and need to be able to spell 10.taxi driver. So we want the div element with a class of list style. So we go back to our scraper. We've already got the soup object. So let's create an element. And from the soup object, we're going to use the select method. And we're going to give it CSS selector kind of syntax format to grab this. So we have told Beautiful Soup that we want it to find the element, a div element that has a class, which is represented by the dot of list style. So beautiful soup should essentially go away and return us with just this. We can actually test that. So what we can do is we can go into the console and we can quickly test that ourselves. So we need to do we need to import the requests library and we need to import beautiful soup. Oh no, sorry. PS4. In fact we're just going to copy uh, these into the console. So page Oh, of course, I'll just give it that. Uh, let's do that again. But let's do, we need to give it the actual website. Come here and I paste this in. That should work. Yep, right. Now we'll take this. And finally, we'll take this. And then what we'll do is I'll print element to the console. And you can see that the way it works is element will return a list of all the elements matching the selector that it was given. So in our case, it only matches against one, but if you had more, you would get a list of them. So that's why it's important to try and, if you only want one particular piece of information from the page, it's important that you give the selector something unique. So usually an ID is better than a class, but in this case, we're lucky because the class only occurs once on the page. So we've only got one item. So we can use that to, we can append that essentially to the results list. So what we can do is we can, let's just store it in another, in fact, what we'll do is in case nothing gets returned, let's use, let's use a try and accept. So do try uh, movie is equal to element and we'll give it the index of zero. So we want it to grab essentially this result that we have here. And then we want to use the beautiful soup method of get text. What that will do is it will give us just this information held within the div element. So we'll get the 10.taxi driver. 
and then we'll append that to the results. Probably could have done this in one line. I just wanted to make it more clear what I was doing. And what the try and accept will do is if there is no, essentially if this list is empty and you try and grab an element at index zero, then it will instead raise an index error. And if we get that, we just want to return out. We'll say something along the lines of uh, no matching element found. There you go. So if we run this, we should get at least one result. There you go. So it's working as we expect. It's going away to our site, it's returning the page, and it's getting the ranking from here, adding it to the results, and then printing it to the console. Great. So what we want to do next is we want to grab the link element on the page and essentially simulate clicking on the link and going to the next page and finding the next ranking. So we want to essentially do the equivalent of clicking on the continued on next page, going to the next page, and then getting the nine, uh, the ninth ranking, which is the red shoes. And we want to simulate for that for all the other pages as well to get all the results in the article. So if we close the page source that we had open before, and we have a look at the page source for this page. We search for next page. What we'll find is that the next page link is a link that has a class of next story. So that's good because if you remember from before, on the previous page, the continue, continued on next page link was also an A tag with a class of next story. So what we can do is we can use a bit of Python recursion to essentially pass that link into our function and get the results for all the following pages as well. So, but let's start first by getting the link from Beautiful Soup. So create a link variable and we will Grab link and this time we will do a dot next story and that will find an a tag with a class of next story. Let me just check up with that right. Yep, next story. And then same as before, we'll use a try and accept to this time get the href href attribute from the link. So the href attribute on the link is what points the browser to the page that we want to go to. So if we look here, the href attribute is this URL here. And in fact, if we copy that and paste it into our browser, we'll see that it will go to number nine, the red shoes. So essentially we're telling uh, Python and the requests library to go to that page and get the HTML for us. So we've got the href from there. And now what we're gonna do so we're going to use recursion and we are going to put that href back into our scraper. So as you can see up here, our function is called scraper and it requires an argument of URL. And we've called that function here and we've called it with the href that we've just taken from the link. So now what will happen is our scraper will go through all of the pages in the article every time it hits this function and we'll get the result from the page and it will eventually break when it hits a page that doesn't have a link with an a tag of next story which will be the final page number one so whatever film has the ranking of number one won't have a link to go to the next page so there won't be a link and the loop will break the scraper the recursion will break uh, it's important when you use recursion to make sure that your essentially your loop has an end point otherwise you your function will just keep running and eventually it will cause an error um, and your that error is to avoid you getting a stack overflow. Um, we need to add something quickly to the beginning of our function. You can see here that I've passed in the results. That's because if we were to just run this, then when the scraper function was called, our results would just be reset to an empty list. So what we want to do is have results here set that equal to none and then we'll change this slightly to if not results results is equal to empty list so on the first iteration of this function uh, 
when we call it down here, we don't provide results. So results will be none and therefore results will be set to an empty list. But after that, once we've appended a few results to our results list and we pass it into the scraper here, then the results will no longer be none and therefore it won't be set to an empty list and we'll just keep appending our results to the results list, which will eventually be returned once we break out of the function, out of the recursion. So I'll quickly add an exception here, same as before, index error, in case we get an empty list returned. I'll just copy this from here. And that is basically it. So we're using Python recursion here. Um, and this function will now run through all of the pages get the results, append them to the results list up here, and then return the final thing. So let's try running that and see what happens. And there you go. So our function has run, our scraper has run, and it's returned us a list with all the results in the article. How easy was that? There are a few downsides to web scraping. Perhaps the biggest issue with web scraping is that if the author was to change the structure of their HTML, so in our case, if they were to change the class names from list style or next story to something else, then our scraper would break and we'd need to fix those issues before we were able to extract again. It can also be a bit slow. As you saw from our example, it did take a little while for those 10 results to get returned. But having said all that, with web scraping, what you see is what you get. And if you know what data you want to get from a page, then web scraping can be a quick and dirty solution to doing that as opposed to having to learn a site's API and try and learn the ins and outs to get the data you want, the equivalent data. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions on what I can do for my next video, please leave a comment below. Thanks.